Uh, thank you, Lord, for um, your Sabbath, and thank you for the blessings, uh, Lord. Uh, we just had an interruption in our broadcast, and we just want to pray that you may continue to bless us, Lord, and focus our minds again on you, and focus us on the work that you have for us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So we, we, we ended off in, um, in chapter 2, verse 23, where God is saying that he was going to kill the children of this woman with death. And um, we end up by saying that this, this saying is not a redundant saying, that he wasn't just talking about literal death, he was talking about the second death, of which we know that there is no return, no coming back from the second death. And um, we have this mention as well in the church of Smyrna. They're going to be saved from the second death. But here Jesus is saying that if they do not repent, they're going to be killed by the second death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins of the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Jesus makes it very clear here that we are going to be rewarded according to our works. And when Jesus comes again in the, the clouds of heaven, we are told that his reward is with him. In the next verse, verse 24, we are told, But unto you I say, um, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you known other burden. Jesus talks about the rest unto you, I say, unto the rest in Thyatira. And this was similar to those who were in the church in the wilderness, this wilderness experience of 42 months. Um, we had churches like the, the Albigenses, the Waldenses, the Huguenots. These were churches that were in the wilderness, that same wilderness experience. And I believe that Jesus here is talking about those in, in, um, in this position. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. This sounds like the rest that Jesus is talking about here. Those who have remained faithful to him through the persecutions. Those who remain constant. And there are folks there in the church, in the, in the, in the wilderness, who were worshiping God according to the dictates of their, their own conscience, doing what Christ expected of them. The word rest in Greek is actually translated lyope, which, which means remnant. And, and this is where you know, we get the idea of the remnant church from. Revelation 11.13 um, talks about uh, a terrified remnant, which is the same word lyope. And, um, and the rest of them gave glory to God. Also, Revelation 12, verse 17 talks about the remnant that keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And this is where we believe our church comes into view in that we are a continuation of that church in the wilderness. Those who kept the commandment and the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, but obviously, um, there, there, therefore, it is only the remnant who, who keeps the commandment of God that parallel here the rest in Tyre They were in opposition to the doctrines and teachings of Jezebel. Opposition to Satan and his kingdom. And so to this rest in Tyre Christ says, as many that have not as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you, you none other burden. Christ is saying that he's going to keep them from the burdens, the rest of the burdens. No other burden will come upon them who are the remnant. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And this is a beautiful statement. Jesus is telling us that 
Though the things that you already have, the things that he's already given to us as a church, we need to hold fast to these things. We need to hold fast to the commandments of God, even though there are churches that are throwing the commandments out, schools that are throwing out the commandments. We need to hold fast to the spirit of prophecy, uh, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. But yet there are churches that are throwing these things out. And... Um, and Jesus reminds us that he is coming. When you see that whole fast till I come, we're reminded, Jesus says, behold, I come what? I come quickly and my reward is with me. Um, in verse 26 it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. The overcomer here gets power over the nation. And this is why we have, a, a, we have a duty to call people out of Babylon, out of this false system of religion, so that they can be a, a, in a chance to be with Christ. In the Great Controversy, page 390, we are told, Notwithstanding the spiritual darkness and alienation from God that exists in the churches that constitute Babylon, the great body of Christ's true followers are still to be found in their communion. So still great amount of people are still out there in uh, the, the, the system, the Roman Catholic system, even the, the, the apostate Protestant system throughout the world. A great body of Christ's followers are still to be found there. Revelation 18 points to the time when the people of God still in Babylon will be called upon to separate from her communion. That angel says, come out of her, my people. This message is the last that will be given to the world and it will accomplish its work. We've got a work to accomplish as well, just like this time. You know, in that, that, um, that last phrase, when he talks about, till I come, I just want to pick up that. This is talking about the blessed hope, the appearing of Jesus Christ. Christ wants us to work to bring people out of Babylon so that when he comes, he will have uh, people ready to meet him. Um, to the overcomer, we'll be given power over the nations. The time will come when Christ will set up a new heaven and a new earth. And those who are overcomers will be given power over the nations. They'll be given a position to rule. In Daniel chapter 7, we're told that thrones were put in place. And here, kingdoms, we're, we're, we're a people of kings and priests. And so God is given rulership and leadership possibilities to those who overcame. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as a vessel of potter, they shall be broken to shivers, even as I receive from my father. And I will give him the morning star. So here, to this church of Tyathara, there's a double blessing as well to the overcomer. Not only have they gotten a blessing of ruling over the nations, but also they will receive the morning star. The reward for their service of charity and faith and patience was to give them a throne that they may rule upon. Judgment that they may see what God himself does. Remember judgment was given to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ now gives judgment to the saints. And so they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And during this thousand years, they have the opportunity to judge and see that Christ's decision was the right one. Um, in John 5, verse 22, we're told that the Father has committed judgment into his hands. Of course, we do not see what this is like at the moment. We can't understand that one part in the scripture says we shall judge angels. 
we should judge even angels. But right now, we can't even judge ourselves. But God gives this blessing to the overcomer. And to the overcomer also, he gives the morning star. And we know that this morning star is Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the bright and morning star. In 2 Peter 1.19, we're told that the morning star will come into our hearts. And isn't that the greatest blessing ever? Isn't that the greatest gift to the overcomer? That Jesus Christ will come and dwell in us, in our hearts. And so we take that, we'll take that blessing. We'll take that, what Jesus has given us. Um, it's a promise. And we'll claim that promise. And we'll live by that promise. He says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Verse 29. And so the church of Thyatira has given a, a huge challenge here. Not only to overcome Jezebel and her doctrines, but also the adulterous relationship with the kings of the earth and, um, and a chance to repent and to overcome and receive the blessings of God. We'll move straightly, straight into the message to Sardis. It is a short message, but it indeed is a powerful one. Now Sardis, many believe that it existed also in the Dark Ages with the church of Tartara. Between 1565 and 1740, this church was probably the church that took over from Tartara. And it was the time when Martin Luther came into the church. The Lutheran Reformation gave Christianity a new start. After that, the sweetness of the gospel was soured into contentious debate over doctrinal issues that served to separate um, a vital connection with Christ. And so when you go to the church of Thyatira, we are told that verse, verse, um, verse 1 of chapter 3, unto the angel of the church of, of, of Sardis, Right, these things which...